A mass of 9 kilograms is suspended at the lower end of a light vertical rope. Initially the mass is at rest. The mass is pulled up vertically with an initial pull on the rope of 137.2 newtons. So here's the initial situation. So this is the situation at t equals 0. The weight of the mass is 9 g newtons. Now that's approximately 9 times 10 or 90 newtons. Uh, the upward pull at this instant is 137.2 newtons. So you can see that the upward pull is greater than the weight at the initial time. The pull diminishes uniformly at the rate of 1 newton for each meter through which the mass is raised. So let's suppose that the initial position is 0. We'll refer to that as x. x is what's used in the question. So at t equals 0, x is 0. Um, so, okay, the mass has been raised by 1 meter, let's say. What's the upper pull on the mass now? Well, it's going to be 137.2 minus 1 newtons. That's 136.2. Okay, so um, the pull diminishes by 1 newton for each meter through which the mass is raised. Of course, the weight of the particle never changes. That's always 9g vertically down. Okay, so that's the situation after 1 meter. Now, after half a meter, we know what's going to happen. Since um, the rate at which the pull diminishes is uniform, after half a meter, the upward pull on the rope will be 137.2 minus 0.5. Okay, so it doesn't matter how small the distance is, we can easily work out the decrease in the pull at any particular distance. Okay, so that's the situation at x equals 1. If we want this pull on the rope at x equals 2, okay, when the particle has moved through 2 meters, we subtract 2 from uh, the initial pull on the rope. In the first question, we want to show that the resultant upward force on the mass when it is x meters above its initial position is 49 minus x. So now let's consider the general situation, where x is any value. It doesn't have to be 1 meter or 2 meters, it's just x meters. Okay, well, the weight of the particle never changes for objects near the surface of the Earth. It's roughly constant. It's 9g newtons. However, the upward force is the initial pull on the particle, which is 137.2, minus the distance in meters through which the particle has moved, which is x. So it's 137.2 minus x newtons. Okay, so I'll call the resultant force F. I will take uh, vectors pointing up as positive. So upwards is the positive direction. So we just need to copy this down. So that's the magnitude of the pull on the particle. And this vector is pointing downwards. So it's minus 9g. By the way, for the resultant force to be upwards, it must be the case that the pull on the rope, 137.2 minus x, is greater in magnitude than the weight of the particle. So that's what's kind of assumed here in this question. Okay, so if you go ahead and simplify this thing here, well, for the numbers you get um, plus 48.91. We can round that to 49. All right, so this is what we get. Um, so for the resultant force to be upwards, we need this thing here to be positive. And that will only happen as long as x, you know, is less than 49. Okay, so we have to take a, a, yeah, so we want this to be positive. So that's what's kind of assumed in this question here, that um, the resultant force is positive, which means in our case that the resultant force is pointing upwards. Next, we want the speed of the mass when it has been raised 15 meters. So we apply Newton's second law. Um, the, resultant, the magnitude of the resultant force is the mass of the particle times the magnitude of the acceleration of the particle. And this must equal 49 minus x. We have the mass. It's 9. Okay, so we know that a is the rate of change of speed with respect to time. Um, but we want to bring in the distance x into this equation, okay? Because 
we are given that the particle has been raised a distance of 15 meters. So we've seen how to do this in several videos before. We multiply this thing above and below by ds. So we get ds over dt, that's rate of change of distance traveled with respect to time. And that's um, speed. Actually here, we are not calling the distance s, but x. So we have distance dx over time taken dt, that's the speed v. So dx dt is v, and then we have dv dx. So this is just the same as before, we use the letter x instead of the letter s. So we can replace this a with v dv dx. So you can see what we need, we want v, the speed, as a function of x. And from that we can get the speed v when x is 15. So we want to solve this differential equation to find v as a function of the distance x. Okay, like all the equations that we cover, it is a separable differential equation. Uh, we just need to multiply both sides by dx and we v on one side, x is on the other side. Next thing, we integrate both sides. Now we want definite integrals here. Um, so let's look at what's going on. Well, what is the speed initially? Okay, when the particle is in, in its initial position. Well, that's in the question. We were given that the particle is at rest. Okay, if we go back up here. Initially, the mass is at rest. So the lower limit here is V equals zero, and that corresponds to the displacement or distance traveled by the particle. Well, we set that equal to zero. The initial position, as we saw in the diagram, is zero. Okay, that's what we have here. X equals zero, and uh, V is zero. Okay, the final position is 15. So the upper limit here is going to be 15. So what we need to find out here is the speed of the particle when the distance traveled by it is 15 meters. Um, so if we want to, we can call this thing V of 15, this upper limit. Okay, if we integrate V to the power of 1 with respect to V, we get a half V squared. We can take this constant factor of 1 ninth through this integral sign. We integrate 49 with respect to x. Well, we just multiply 49 by x. If we integrate minus x with respect to x, we get minus a half x squared. And our limits here are from 0 to 15. Okay, we plug the upper limit in. Well, that's what we're after, actually. The speed v when x is 15. So we need to s square it and multiply by it a half. And uh, then we, we have a minus sign and we plug in the lower limit. Well, that's just 0, so we get a half of 0 squared. That's 0. So we have v of 15 squared in here. And uh, this is straightforward on the right hand side. You know, we just plug 15 in, work it all out then subtract this thing with 0 in. Okay, on the right hand side we get 69.1666 recurring. Um, multiply this by 2, take the square root, and you will get 11.76 meters per second. Part 3. Find the work done by the pull on the rope when the mass has been raised by 15 meters. Okay, so what is the force in question here? Well, the force in question is not the resultant force on the particle. It's the force on the particle due to the pull on the rope. And we saw that earlier. Um, the initial force is 137.2 newtons, and that force, is de that force decreases uniformly by um, one newton for each meter that the particle rises through. So if the particle has risen through x meters, the pull on the rope is 137.2 minus x meters. Okay, so we are not looking at the resultant force, which is 49 minus x. So we are looking for um, the work done on the particle due to the pull on the rope, not due to the resultant force on the particle. So we saw in a previous video that the work done by a force on a particle is the component of the force in the direction of motion of the particle multiplied by the distance through which the particle moves. Um, here we are dealing with a varying force, so we have to consider a small distance traveled by the particle. We will call that small distance dx 
we actually covered this situation in a previous video. We covered the situation of the work done by a varying force. Okay, we have to chop the path of the particle up into tiny little intervals, dx. Well, we called them ds in a previous video, but same idea, of course. Okay, so we need to get the work done by the pull on the rope as the particle moves a tiny distance dx. We consider that situation first. So we need a component of the force in the direction of motion. Well, that's just the pull on the rope because the pull on the rope is in the same um, direction as the direction of motion. Okay, so if the particle moves a distance dx, well, the pull on the rope is given by this formula here. Initially, of course, x is zero, but at, at, we are interested in the force at a general position x. In that case, it's 137.2 minus x. All right, now that's just um, the tiny bit of work done as the particle moves the tiny distance dx. This is an infinitesimal. And we know what we have to do. We have to sum all those works done. So we could call the work done by this uh, um, force when the particle moves the distance dx as dw. So this is the infinitesimal amount of work done by the force on the particle when the particle moves a tiny infinitesimal distance dx. So that's dw and uh, we have to sum all these tiny works. That means we have to integrate. So this is a sum of the um, um, infinitesimal amount of works, as I've said a few times, and uh, we just have to perform this integral, but over what distance? A distance of 15 meters. So we have to integrate from 0 to 15. Okay, this is a straightforward integral to evaluate, so I won't go through it. Uh, plug in the limits and you will get 1945.5 joules. Okay, as an aside, we will consider the work done by the resultant force, which we saw in the previous part is 49 minus x. Again, this is a varying force, of course. Depends on what x is. That's the distance that the particle has been raised through. Well, to do that, we would have to consider an infinitesimal amount of work done as the particle moves through the infinitesimal distance dx. So just like before, we multiply the force by the distance, okay, or the component of the force in the direction of motion. Well, that's just 49 minus x. Um, over an infinitesimal distance dx because the force keeps varying. So that'll give us dw and then we have to sum all those works to get the total work done. Here we have to sum from 0 to 15. If you calculate this integral you will get 622.5 joules. Now we could uh, uh, arrive at this result by using something that we proved in a previous video. Um, we use the work energy theorem, which states that the work done by the resultant force on an object is given by the change in the kinetic energy of the object. We can write that as delta K. So it's a very famous result. What is delta K? Well, it's the kinetic energy of the particle at the end of its motion minus the kinetic energy of the particle at the start of its motion. This is the in so this is the final kinetic energy and this is the initial kinetic energy. Well we know what the initial kinetic energy is because the initial speed is zero. So we have a half m times zero squared. So that's going to give us zero because the particle starts from rest. So we're going to get a half m v squared minus zero. So so this is what the um, change in the kinetic energy is. So it's a half times the mass, which is nine, times the final speed. Now, the final speed was something that we calculated in part two. We got 11.76 meters per second. So plugging in for V, um, the change in the kinetic energy is final kinetic energy minus initial kinetic energy. So it's final kinetic energy minus zero. So we get 622.5 joules, same as here. Well, if we allow for rounding error, uh, these are the same. Okay, but this is not the answer to the question, of course, because the question clearly states that we want the work done on the particle 
not due to the resultant force, but due to the pull on the rope. So again, we can only apply the work energy theorem when we are getting the work done by the resultant force. As an aside, notice that the work done by the pull on the rope is greater than the work done on the particle due to the resultant force. That's because the pull on the rope does positive work on the particle. We get a positive answer here. If we wanted the work done on the particle due to gravity, we would have a negative answer. Because uh, the force on the particle due to gravity would be minus 9g. Okay, we take upwards as positive. So we would be integrating from 0 to 15, minus 9g. So we multiply the force, which is negative, is downwards by the displacement, which is upwards, in the positive direction. Okay, so the work done due to gravity, which I'm writing as Wg, is minus 1324.35 joules. And if you add the work done by gravity onto the work done by the pull on the rope, you will get uh, the work done by the resultant force.